All right. Um, the, the guy that started the town hall, uh, what would you call it, revolution in August, um, the author of the now infamous mob memo and uh, one of our favorite people, <laughs> Mr. Bob McGuffey. Yeah. Tanya. Well, here we are all again, my radical extremist brothers and sisters. It's great to again have the opportunity to speak with you as we gather here for the third annual Hartford Tax Day Tea Party. It's been quite a year by any measure. Our liberty movement was responsible for generating an electoral tidal wave that swept into power 63 new congressmen and 7 new senators last November and relegated Nancy Pelosi to that seat on the back bench. They called us racist, but it was the left caught intimidating voters at the Philadelphia polls. They call us prone to violence, but it was the left caught head-knocking and death-threatening at the Wisconsin Capitol and the Rhode Island protests. They call us radical, but it's the president who's suing Arizona for merely enforcing federal immigration law. It's the president who's in contempt of court in Louisiana for refusing to rescind his ban on Gulf deep water oil drilling. And it's the president deciding not to enforce the federal defense of marriage law. Now, as we all know, one of our movement's central tenets is adherence to the constitutional law and a reduction in the insidious reach of the federal government. We have been sending our federal representatives to Washington with this message, but their efforts to date have been disappointing. But thank God for the governors, our heroes of the Constitution, starting with Brewer in Arizona, McDonald in Virginia, Perry of Texas, Christie of New Jersey, Kasich of Ohio, and yes, Walker in Wisconsin. They have each stood up for the rights of their citizens and pushed back on federal power, pushed back on union collectivism, and have led the way in returning the budget sanity to their state governments. Remember, the states created the federal government, granting it limited, enumerated powers, and reserving the balance of those powers for the states and the people. We can stop the insidious encroachment of federal power through our state houses. We need to encourage people in this building to come out from under their desks and start reclaiming our God-given rights for the citizens of Connecticut. Because, folks, between the election and the bravery of our hero governors in other states, we've got the left on the run in the spring of 2011, and it looks mighty fine to me. amazing turnaround in two years. Yes, America's awakening. Awakening to the debilitating agenda of the left. Awakening to the lies and propaganda of the mainstream press. Awakening to the subversive tactics of a minority ruling political class seeking to make us a nation of dependent serfs. We must welcome these newly awakened patriots into our movement. But it seems our governor has not gotten the message. He thinks he can tax his way out of a federal, out of a budget deficit and on to prosperity. He tells us in his town halls that Connecticut hasn't grown its job base in over 20 years. Yes, and more and more people and businesses are leaving the state today. This governor's budget proposal only guarantees an acceleration of that destructive trend. In proposing a billion and a half of new taxes, he pursues exactly the wrong path, because taxation saps purchasing power from the economy. Taxation inhibits the formation of capital. Taxation increases the prices of products. Taxation limits human liberty. And taxation kills jobs. Yeah. Yeah. Remember, according, according to the Tax Policy Center, the top 1% of households pay 40% of income taxes. The top 10% pay 73% of income taxes. 
But unfortunately, the 47% of U.S. households pay virtually no federal income taxes. We want low taxes for everyone. But every worker's got to pay something. It's time to get out of the wagon and pull it with the rest of us. Malloy's tax strategy will deliver to this state the decimation that liberal rule has wrought on big cities like Detroit, and he'll create our own homegrown versions here in Bridgeport and New Haven. Taxation and the accompanying state dependency has wrung the vitality out of these communities and imprisoned their residents, and they need to be liberated from that destructive dependency. Indeed, we're all desperate for liberation. Liberation from government economic intervention. Liberation from restrictions on domestic energy production. Liberation from overbearing regulation. Liberation from socializing the health care industry. Liberation from currency inflation. And liberation from a federal government that's spending us into oblivion. So as I, as I close out, folks, Let's see if the governor's listening up there and join me as we whisper in his ear, No more taxes! No more taxes!